Hello. So I was worried that my Volander demonstration might have been a little bit hard to follow. I wanted to show you some programmable blocks that are super, super basic and very, very useful. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I built that ship ahead of us, the one that looks a little bit like a T. Um, and it's a small support ship. It contains a refinery and an assembler and all that stuff. Uh, oxygen. And it allows other ships to dock with it. And what happens is you can trade with it. So the idea is that this is a vessel that would go out into the wilds and find whatever, you know, miners or whatever happened to be out there and needed to, do, to have some trading done. In this case, I've chosen a fighter, and I figure that this fighter would be the sort of, you know, maybe a runaway from the military and he's trying to uh, get himself some more oxygen so he doesn't die. So, you know, he'll land badly because he's drunk. And then he'll turn off his engines, because otherwise I won't let him aboard. And there you go. He's docked up, and he's ready to hes ready to trade, and he's ready to come aboard. And there's the entrance up there. First thing I want you to see is that this actually lists who he is, and it stops being a green arrow. So that's fun. Inside, we've got this very simple bay. And then we enter into this small ship region. Now this region has some plants to grow oxygen so that even on long journeys when we don't have any mines around, we can still have our supply of oxygen. Uh, and it's also got all of the living space and stuff that you might need. Uh, now I'm not going to say it's cushy, but it works. Here's a bathroom for you. I think I forgot to put in a shower. Well, whatever. You can see that over here it says ready, and over here it says docked, left is empty, center is empty, grid D small 270. So it knows that the right side has something parked there. And we can see that that is definitely the case. You can also see that there are four huge engines, and they are uh, off. So what's next? Well. Dudington makes the trades he wanted to make, gets his oxygen or whatever, and uh, we were full of oxygen, which is why that didn't decompress. And then he gets back aboard his ship, and he goes home. Or back to wherever he was. It's not necessarily home, is it? Kind of obnoxious that we seem to have got the landing gears and the... There we are. Uh, come on, move. Oh, I've got to turn it back on. I am... Uh full of stupid today. That's fine. You roam. Okay, so now he's pulled away, and he goes off and he does his own thing. And that's our contact gun. Time to move on. Now, obviously, that's not very much profit there. That's just one guy who needs, like, some oxygen and uh, some food and whatever. So if we're going to uh, make our, our profit, what we've actually got to do is operate as cheaply as possible. So how do you operate as cheaply as possible? You make your ship super, super small and super, super lightweight, and you keep your speed up. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to shrink out our landing gears, or all of our bay. We're going to shrink our bay back down into nothing. And you notice that the four large engines came online. And those four, those four large engines give us some serious uh, acceleration. Now this isn't a spry ship by any means, but it is super fast for a carrier. Alright, we've reached the new star system. So we shut off the engines and extend everything again. Now you may think, oh, that's all timers. You can do all that with timers. You're right. You can do a lot of this stuff with timers. Not all of it, some of it. But the thing is that timers actually uh, do toggles. They, 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 for example, the pistons. You can't set the piston to open or close. You can just reverse the direction it's going. Yeah, well, that's not entirely true, because you can use a programmable block. 
So here is my pistons open block, and I've got a pistons close that does the same thing in the opposite direction. Here you can see that I define a velocity as 1. Then I get the text status panel, and uh, I write to it ready. And this is very, very basic. It just lets me know that, uh, that the, that the uh, ship is currently in its ready state rather than its closed mobile state. And uh, you do that the same way that I taught you in the other video. You do I my text panel grid terminal system, which is the ship, get block with name, base status. Down here we do the same thing for the pistons. We get the piston named piston A, we set its velocity equal to velocity, we get the piston B, set its velocity equal to velocity. So we're not reversing these pistons, we are setting their velocity in an absolute way. And that means that even if we were to spam the toggles, we would never have to worry about accidentally being open or closed when we need it to be the other one. Which is good, because if we were to close the pistons with that glass extended, we would rip the ship apart. There is one more, uh, aside from the pistons closed and pistons open, there is one more piece of code in this, in this particular ship, and that is the one that toggles between open and closed. Because this button here, or in the case of when I'm in the seat, the first command key, uh, it toggles the bays. But in order to do that, it has to know whether the bay is currently open and needs to close, or whether the bay is currently closed and needs to open. So to do that, it checks that status block, the, the, the panel that we wrote to, and since we've written either closed or ready, we check and see which one it is, and we call the other timer block. Now these are timer blocks, so this timer block calls the, uh, calls the, the actual code, but it also calls a number of other things. So not everything is handled in code. Only a very small amount is handled in code. It's like a bevy of normal timer blocks, two or three normal timer blocks, and then code to make absolutely sure that things are going in the direction you want them to go rather than toggling randomly. It's very straightforward, right? This is all super basic stuff. Now this is just a proof of concept ship. I don't think anyone would go to Steam to download it, but it is very, very easy to use, very, very straightforward, and there is one more piece of code. I said there were three, there are four. This one is the bay monitor. This one's a little bit more complex, but not by much. I'm going to show it to you now. So the bay monitor is responsible for looking and seeing whether a ship has docked and displaying that information if it has. So let's start at the end. The end is handle bay, bay name. So in order to do this, we have an eyeball and we have a, uh, a text panel status. This, actual, this text panel status is just for the exterior panels. You can actually do without that. The sensor is the important part. So we fetch the sensor that is named after the bay. So if we're fetching the right bay, we fetch I right. If we're fetching the left bay, we fetch I left. You just name things correctly and it works very easily. Then you set your target equal to the last detected entity. If the target is null, then we show texture. That, that would be the green arrow, and we return and nothing. If it exists, we write to the, uh, to the text panel what the target is, and then we tell it to display that, and then we return that text. Up here, this is what actually gets called, the main. And this is, uh, I'm going to throw a couple of tricks in here. First off, we have this I my text panel inventory on the outside of the main block. And what that means is that if inventory is equal to null, we go and find it, but we don't have to keep finding it every single time. We only have to find it again if you recompile. And that's just a little bit of a, a, little bit of a save. You know, you don't, have to, uh, you don't have to continually search the whole ship every single time. It's not important in this case, but it's a handy trick to know about. You can save the, exactly what you've looked for, and you don't have to keep looking for it every single time. You just look for it the first time. So then I get three strings, D0, 1, and 2, and I search for left, right, and center. Um, and that's very, very straightforward. We already showed you the handle bay. So if, the, if there is something in the bay, these strings become the name of that thing, and if there is nothing in the bay, these strings are null. So I check and I see if they're all null, you just write nothing docked and you return. On the other hand, if at least one of them is full, we write out this convoluted list of things. We say docked this thing or that thing, this thing or that thing, this thing or that thing. Please note that if you use write public text with a second argument of true, like this, it adds to the public text rather than overwriting the public text. Just so you realize. And that's how we got that long list over here when we had that long list. So that's four very, very simple pieces of code 
that have done things that would have been very difficult or dangerous to do using timer blocks. This ship is uh, going to operate as intended all the time. The only way you can break it is if you try and fold out those bays while you're moving at very, very high speeds. Uh, let's go ahead and show you that now. Oh, wow, it worked. Normally it rips at least one engine out. I wouldn't recommend doing that. But you can see, we can still maneuver even with the bays open. It's just the four big engines that got turned off. Also, this is a tin penny ship. It is super cheap to operate. It has two small reactors. So, or I think it might, might be, maybe it's four. Let me double check that. It's got four small reactors. It's got four small reactors, which isn't really enough to power that many engines. So the batteries are there to, to power up the four big engines, because four small reactors is nowhere, nowhere near enough to power four big engines. So I hope that this is a little bit more approachable, and you don't feel scared of programmable blocks. They are super useful, uh, and they work great, as long as you know what you're doing.